My mom wanted me to go to a better neighborhood because we lived in the, in the ghetto. Yeah. They used to shoot, sell drugs. We were both misfits, Yeah. right? We didn't like fit in the room. And I think when you don't fit in the room, the beauty is something really freeing happens, yeah. which is you're not defined by that. So you get to define exactly who you are on your own terms. Is there a big difference between somebody that hands you a company oh, yeah. versus you doing it from scratch? I, you know, I was working for other people. I'd had like the normal job, right? I went to work for somebody else to get the paycheck. And I thought, why am I creating value for them? Like, why am I cleaning up their messes? I'm gonna go make my own, and I'm gonna keep 100% of the value. Do you have some savings? Do you borrow money, or how, how do you fund your first company? Okay, I maxed out every credit card. I do not advise, <laughs> but I really do. To this day, I, I swear, even with as many zeros are on my bank account, I think I still have bad credit. But I was, pay I was betting on myself, and I the, the phone calls used to come from the credit card companies, and I would like, sit in the corner like, okay, okay, I'm, I'm gonna make it. And I feel like I'm gonna faint, like I'm gonna get a stroke. Yeah. Like, I don't know what's going on, but in a way I do know what's going on because I'm having dinner with my parents and I'm turning purple. I can't swallow my food. Sills are there and then they kind of stare at me and they're like looking at me like, why are you, you know, like I'm yeah. getting white and purple. And, and I know that I, I'm about to choke, but it's because of all the stress and, and because I don't have any money. I'm, I'm, my bank account is down to like dollars and, and I'm like, how is this going on? What am I gonna do? How am I gonna pay my people? Like, I don't know how I'm gonna cut payroll Friday. Tell you, you are describing like the absolute panic of entrepreneurship, yeah. I think so perfectly. It is not for the faint of heart. And every successful, really successful entrepreneur, they, I feel like their ideas are just better than the normal people. Like actually hang on to your own thing as long as you can. And then when you have enough demand that you can no longer be the only salesperson, start hiring. That's just genius because that's something that people want and need. Yeah. It's like, it's never gonna go away. Like people love sex. We're workaholics, let's be honest, yeah. right? And I, I get like you should obviously know your own body and know what's too stressful, but like we ride on adrenaline. Well, today especially, everybody wants to be an entrepreneur. Yeah. Everybody, like everybody is a CEO, everybody has a business card and, and it's, and, and but I don't think, I, I don't think people understand what real entrepreneurship is. The most important thing I did was picking the right people. Okay. It's the single most important thing I did is finding those people who align. And here, here's what I did. I gave them skin in the game. Mm -hmm. If they were gonna come, they were willing to bet on me, they were gonna get a piece of the company. And I think good people, you're just ethical, you work hard, you have the right attitude, you have your loyalty and things always happen good to you. And then those people that try to take shortcuts or backstab you or things like that, bad things always come back to them. I gifted shares in my second company to all the people that worked with me in my first. How much equity to salespeople? How much equity to... Uh... Everyone got shares. Everyone got shares. And I think really the sort of rule of thumb is what would be so meaningful to them? What if you 3X their salary, right, yeah. in an outcome? What if you 5X their salary? And really thinking about shares relative to that contribution that they are, but every single person, whether you pack the boxes or you lead the sales team, got skin in the game. As you build your company, you got a pie, right? What am I gonna, gonna give away as pieces of this pie? Give away 20% of it to people who work for you. Yeah. 20 to 30% of it, gone you're gonna give that away to people because they're gonna make the difference in how much you ultimately ultimately yeah. make at the end. I hire owners. That's who I hire, owners. And ownership is quite literal, right? Because yeah. it's my commitment to you that I'm gonna give you a piece of this. Your commitment to me is that you're gonna show up with an ownership mindset. Yeah. What do you feel in that moment when you sell your first company and you have all that money? I gotta tell you what I did, so I, I sold the company billion dollars up front and you know I woke up the next morning I'm still the same person I have more zeros in my bank account I'm still the same person yeah. you know what I did I went to work because I like to go to work I sold my company for a billion dollars to a huge company and they're gonna take it across the world and everything else and then guess what they didn't launch it you talk about uh, being bold yeah. and, and like screaming it to the world right so like I do a lot of that and then, um, you know, sometimes my wife and, and other people, they're like, don't say that, don't say that. What about, what, what is everybody on Facebook and Instagram gonna think? They're gonna think 
you, you haven't done that. What, what if you don't do it? But I like to put you know, things uh, out there and then I make them happen. But, but is it important or were you like that? Did you ever have any haters? I think when you're disruptive, when you're challenging what is the norm, you're gonna have people who don't like it. Yeah. And that's just fine. They cannot like it. I'm not for everybody. And that is totally okay. It's a daily pill you take. And for women, it's, uh, it's brain flow, not blood flow. Yeah. So we turn on in the brain. Uh, that's where we unlock desire. And for really so many women, so many women, millions of women, um, something goes off at some point in their life. It might be after kids, it might be, you know, a variety of things, but they just don't have that level of desire they once had and they want it back. It happened to me when I when I had a million dollars cash the first time. I was kind of like, I can't believe this. And, and I, I seriously logged in maybe like a, a thousand times that day. Can I tell you a secret? Yeah. yeah. I still think I'll be poor. Yeah. I, I think that's the truth. Like, I still think like you're capable, get up and make money. And look, money is a conduit. It can be for good or for bad. How are you gonna use it? Why, why do you think everybody wants to build something by themselves? Like, they'll have an idea and they're like, ooh, I can't, I can't tell anybody my idea. I yeah. can't tell anybody, yeah. they're gonna steal it. And I'm like, oh, hell no. Go tell everybody your idea. Like mm -hmm. be in the elevator with people and be like, you can't believe what I'm about to do. That is, you put it out there in the world. I think even as you said, the boldness, yeah. you're putting it out there in the world and I think making it come to fruition. What, what did you do or what's culture to you? Culture to me is literally writing down on a piece of paper who you are going to be in this world and never compromising it. How do you hire the right people? Listen, we all have that drawer. Yeah. Right? We all have that like file drawer where you open up and it's the people who didn't work. Yeah. So we all experience that, right? I think there are a couple things. Um, one is, again, you're defining the characteristics you're looking for in them. Then you're asking them the questions that tease that out in the interview, like, tell me the story. I'll tell you my number one interview question. It is, what is the first way you made money? Yeah, and then switching that when you hire the wrong person, how soon do you get rid of them? 90 days. Like you should always have in my mind a 90 day period. Do you believe in building a company always with the idea that you're gonna sell it or, or building companies to keep them? Um, I will tell you, I'll never have a company that um, my team's kids will work at. Entrepreneurship is not for everybody, right? So you need to say, like I literally will say to them, all right, all my cards on the table, this is what we're like. You may love this, this may be the family you never <laughs> knew you wanted, or you may be like 30 days into this going, oh my God, who are these people? What is this madness? What is this pace that I have to work at? One um, man that I know, he sold his company and he told me that that was his biggest mistake. He, and, and he told me, Sometimes it's better to keep it because you're making that that flow that flow every month. But when you sell it, you get a, like a One nice check. Yeah, but then it's sure. like, what do I do now? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you agree with that or? or? Uh, I, I I don't. Um, but it's just it's just a different probably philosophy yeah, in yeah. that like I'll go build it to a place and then take the big check and say you you go and take it to the next place. I'm yeah. starting over. No matter how big you get always meet every single person you're gonna put on your team. How do you build a culture? Order pizza. Get everybody around the table, whatever you want, pick the food, but sit together every day. It not only bonds us together as a family, but we do actually know everyone in the company is on the same page. Yeah. We know everything that people are working on, what they're struggling with. It is the absolute opportunity. I heard you say also about being curious. For sure. That, that it's very important, that that's a good quality. Think about it, like all of the folks were on stage together, right, mm -hmm. at Driven, mm -hmm. what would be a common characteristic? They're all like wildly curious. Yeah, always appreciate your people. That appreciation is really good for your people and your customers. Um, how, how important was that in every venture that you've done? Huge. So look, I, I think that's a bit of a life philosophy. Like, do you show up with an attitude of gratitude? I mean, honestly, on my darkest days, the, and there are dark days when you build these things, 
I still was able to kind of pick myself up and marvel at like, how cool is it that I'm, that I'm getting to do this? How cool is it that these people have bet on me? How cool is it that people gave me money to be able to realize this dream? Like, I need to show up for them. And I think that appreciation, that appreciation for every single person who bet on me, made me committed every day to pay them back and then some. Hey guys, welcome back to Driven Channel and today I have a special guest, um, probably the most excited I've been to uh, interview a super successful woman. So I'm um, Cindy Eckert and I'm really excited. Cindy, first of all, um, uh, I'm blessed here to be with my wife yes. back there and uh, we're here. Your office is beautiful. <laughs> Thanks. And uh, we're really, um, you know, we're, we're excited to learn from you. Oh, and, thank you. And, and uh, my, my, first, my first thing I want to start with is um, who is Cindy? Like, where did you get your entrepreneurship from? Where, like, when you grew up, did you grow up uh, poor, rich, or yeah. who got you into business? Well, first of all, Albert, I love that you and Sylvia are here. And by the way, for anybody watching, like, literally, we're texting last night. And he's like, I'm getting on an airplane and I'm coming. So, yeah. welcome to the Pinky Bader. I'm you. so thrilled Thank you me. guys are here. It's an honor. Um, and who am I? I am like a blue collar kid who grew up and should not have ever gotten to this place, um, if you will. But I, I was always driven with like a love of kind of business and making connections. And I have two big brothers yeah. and they'll tell you that like when I was little, there was no game I would play in which I wasn't the CEO. <laughs> so I started young. Um, I used to, my very first hustle is my two big brothers. You know, they just wanted to like sit on the couch and watch TV. So I would make them pay me to go get them things from the refrigerator and bring it to them. So that's my first hustle. I had a weird childhood. Um, my dad came home. I was in the fourth grade. I was nine years old. And I lived in like very blue collar town upstate New York. Um, and he said, do you want to go to Fiji? I didn't know what Fiji was. Yeah. I said, what's Fiji? And he said, well, go, go find out. There was no Fiji water then. So it really was like nobody, right? The other side of the world. He said, figure it out. So I went in and I like looked at the globe we had. I spun it is the other side of the world. And I came back in and I looked at my dad. I was like, yeah, I want to go to Fiji. Like we never done a trip like that. And he goes, good, because we're moving there in a couple of weeks. And so I was immediately transplanted outside of my comfort zone into this very unusual childhood. From that year on, I moved every single year to a new school. I think looking back, that was my training for what I was going to do in the rest of my life, which was I was going to run toward these kind of challenging, uncomfortable situations and take them on. Yeah. Uh, see, I had a similar experience when I went to elementary school. Yeah. I took the bus. My mom wanted me to go to a better neighborhood because we lived in the, in the ghetto. Yeah. They used to shoot, sell drugs. So I took the school bus yeah. to Granada Hills. So I don't know if you're familiar with it. Yeah. But it's, it's a different area than w what I was used to. Everybody spoke English. My first language was Spanish. Yeah. So I didn't know any English. So I get there and, and it kind of makes me like fight. And it yes. gives me that fighter, uh, yeah. you know, and, and I, I think that when you went to Fiji, yeah. what, where, did you have to figure a lot of things out when I, you were there? I think it's your experience, right? We were both misfits, yeah. right? We didn't like fit in the room. And I think when you don't fit in the room, the beauty is something really freeing happens, yeah. which is you're not defined by that. So you get to define exactly who you are on your own terms. Mm -hmm. And I think it does create, you know, that fighter in you, I think is like independent thought, Yeah. right? Like you're going to get to do it on your own terms. And that's a real gift because I think for many people who have a conventional, like I stayed in my comfort zone, I went to the same school, um, you are boxed in mm -hmm. because you're like, you're the geek or you're the jock or you're the something. And we got to, we didn't fit any one of those things. Yeah. So we defined who we were. When, when you start, before we get into Slate, your first company, right? Yeah. When, 
when you thought about opening the company, yeah. did and did anybody give you the blueprint? Okay. And and before that, what what's different is. Is there a big difference between somebody that hands you a company, oh, yeah. which uh, versus you doing it from scratch? Because Slate, how did Slate become Slate? Like truly Slate. I named it that because it was clean Slate. I'm doing it on my own terms. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm going to figure it out. And every mess I make is my mess. So I'm going to mm. clean it up because I realized, you know, I was working for other people. I'd had like the normal job, right? I went to work for somebody else to get the paycheck. And I thought, why am I creating value for them? Mm. Like, why am I cleaning up their messes? Yeah. I'm going to go make my own and I'm going to keep 100% of the value. Mm. So no, nobody gave me the blueprint. A lot of people told me I was crazy. Yeah. And, and actually, I think even that was a good thing, right? That people challenged me. They were like, you're, you're never going to make it. You don't have the pedigree. You don't have the background. You don't have the context. You don't have the money yeah. to do this. And all of that was a bit challenge accepted. So Slate, do you have some savings? Do you borrow money or how, how do you fund your first company? Okay, I maxed out every credit card. I do not advise, <laughs> but I really do. To this day, I, I swear, even with as many zeros are on my bank account, I think I still have bad credit. But I was, ta I was betting on myself mm -hmm. and I, the, the phone calls used to come from the credit card companies and I would like sit in the corner like, okay, okay, I'm, I'm gonna make it. Now, I did that as much as I could and then I had to figure out, how am I really gonna get capital to scale this? Yeah. I didn't have a rich uncle. You didn't have a rich uncle, mm -hmm. right? So you figure it out. I started thinking about, if this person wrote me a check, it would make all the difference. How do I get in the room with them? And I had like my list. Yeah. Um, I won't call it stalking, but maybe it's some version yeah, of that, yeah. right? I was figuring it out. And I got into the room with a guy that I had identified. He was the one. And, uh, and I was just relentless in making him listen to what I was trying to build. And when he finally um, said, all right, I'll write you a check. I'm going to bet on you. I said, great. Now I need to meet four of your friends. So Cindy, I have this moment when, you know, my, my first company yeah. is, is, is just getting really stressful. And I'm in, at the gym and I see all these, uh, all these trainers that are walking around and I see them floating like in circles. And I feel like I'm gonna faint, like I'm gonna get a stroke. Yeah. Like I don't know what's going on, but in a way I do know what's going on because I'm having dinner with my parents and I'm turning purple. I can't swallow my food, Sills are there. And then they kind of stare at me and they're like looking at me like, why are you, you know, like I'm yeah. getting white and purple. Yeah. And, and I know that I, I'm about to choke, but it's because of all the stress and, and because I don't have any money. Yeah. I'm, I'm, my bank account is down to like dollars and, and I'm like, how is this going on? Yeah. What am I gonna do? How am I gonna pay my people? Like, I don't know how I'm gonna cut payroll Friday. Yeah. Did you ever go through a moment like that? And when was the moment that you said, you know what? I'm gonna ask an investor for yeah. some money or I'm gonna get some money. What, how was that for you? I gotta tell you, you are describing like the absolute panic of entrepreneurship. Yeah. I think so perfectly. It is not for the faint of heart, right? Building your own thing from scratch is not for the faint of heart because you're gonna have those moments where you can't make payroll, where you don't know where the next dollar is coming from. And you're really freaked out that everybody who told you like you're yeah. crazy to do this were right. And I think that's the, those are the moments that define us, right? In terms of how we react to that moment and do we get back up and keep fighting. And for me, I definitely had terrible moments like that in the early days. And I think when I knew I needed to go get money from somebody else, first of all, I will say I held on to it myself for as long as I could, which I think is good advice. Yeah. Like we're so about like investor checks, you know, and everything nowadays in the news, like actually hang on to your own thing as long as you can. Mm -hmm. And then when you have enough demand that you can no longer be the only salesperson, start hiring. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I don't know if you did this in the early days. I would like sit at a desk and get phone calls and they'd be like, can we talk to your lawyer? I'd be like, absolutely. Hello, yeah. <laughs> right? You yeah. are playing, when you realize you're literally playing every part in the company and you have enough demand, start hiring salespeople. Yeah, and how many years was that for you? Uh, it took me, I think I was probably at it for not quite a year, but I probably was at it for like not, well, that's not true. Yeah. A little over a year, like a year, yeah. a year and a half before I really got there. Yeah. And, and then was this around 
2008 when what, yeah the oh, you know out. I love to like start things in the middle of a financial crisis because yeah. that's just just pile on that pressure let's do this um, and I really did start it in like a terrible moment in time and yet like again I was gonna bet on me yeah. I was going to quit making other people uh, lots of money and I was gonna see if I had what it took, I yeah. guess, to get to get it done. And um, there were dark, I call it the dark days. I think you forget, when you ask me that question, yeah. I think you black, you like black out okay, those, yeah. don't you? Like to be able to survive and do it I, again? I think I'm still like, I'm always black, <laughs> you blacked, do? I black out. Like, yeah. I, I think I'm still blacked out I because, because of the momentum. And I think the momentum is really important. And you tell me, cause you know, I wanna learn from you, yeah. but. But uh, when you when you get that momentum, when you start your company, yeah. like how how important is it to ride that momentum yeah. when, when you just don't want to stop working and and you're blacked out the whole time? I mean, listen, I I think I we're workaholics. Let's be honest, yeah. right? And I I get like you should obviously know your own body and know what's too stressful, but like we ride on adrenaline yeah. of this, the rush of getting it done and the roller coaster ride of this, which is why I say it's not for the faint of heart. I mean, for me, the momentum was incredible. If you can gut it out, yeah. if you can gut it out through the early days, through the desert, as I would say, then, oh my God, is it gonna be an incredible ride when it finally kicks in. The very first day, I like Slate, we had a product we sold for men, and you know, I like clicked on the phone lines. I can remember the phone lines going on. I got two phone calls that yeah. day, two phone calls. One came from Rochester, New York, which is where I'm from. Mm -hmm. And one came from Jackson, Mississippi, which is where my mom is from. It wasn't actually any of their friends, my dad or my mom, yeah. but like, I thought, okay, this is a good sign. And then guess what? I didn't get another phone call for like three weeks. Yeah. That was terrifying. But then, you know, the phone starts to ring or the calls start to come yeah. in. And again, if you can gut it out, I think that momentum hits and it's the most exhilarating ride. What exactly was Slate? So Slate, we had the only FDA approved testosterone product for men, the pellets, the yeah. long acting pellet. It was the only one um, long acting at its time. So it was a male sexual health company. And where did you get that idea from? Yeah, so I bought it from a guy who had developed it. Mm -hmm. So there was a man who was a brilliant inventor and he didn't market it. So here was this product that existed. It wasn't being marketed. He was, he was like the mad scientist. Yeah. He didn't trust anybody. Like he has all his money like stuffed in his mattresses, yeah. you know, at home. And I went in and convinced him to sell it to me because I knew that urologists would, would write this product for men. Yeah, and every successful, really successful entrepreneur, they, I feel like their ideas are just better than the normal people. Yeah. yeah. Uh, like yeah. Where, where do you get your ideas? Because I'm sure that was just not something that you just kind of when I come and do this, yeah, like no. where did you get that idea for that? And then, you, then your next idea, it's kind of related, it but is. now it's for women. Oh, totally. but, but it was it that where you just, I don't know, you tell me. I think lightning strikes a bit, yeah. you know, in these ideas. The truth is ideas are not, they're like slight iterations of something that already exists. Mm -hmm. That's really invention, right? Don't yeah. reinvent the wheel, right? That's an expression for a reason. Like if you can see it and perfect it, yeah. do it. Yeah. Do it because that, those are the people I think who see real possibility. For me, I mean, with that idea, uh, I, <laughs> I love this space. I love this area of science. And yeah. I, there were products, there are lots of products for guys. There were shots, there were creams. I have two big brothers. I already yeah. told you that. Yeah, yeah. Like I can be standing on the beach with them. They will be as red as a lobster and still not put sunscreen on. I'm like, something is wrong with the way that we deliver these yeah. products today, there's gotta be a better way. Yeah. And it's like, again, it's something that is already there, but it's a tweak on it. Um, and that is what, being building that business in men is entirely what led me to my big breakthrough, which yeah. is the female Viagra. But that's just genius because that's something that people want and need. Yeah, it's like, sure. it's never gonna go away. Like people love sex. Yes. And, and they're, they're, they're never, you're, you'll never, it's, it's never going to go out of style or out of business because people yeah. need that, especially, you know, like later right. when you're in your twenties, you're, you know, you, yeah. you don't have, you don't have that need, but then as you grow, yeah. you're going to have so many clients and it's never going to go out. Yeah. Um, but you know, think about it. Sex is also kind of taboo. Like we can, we joke about it at yeah. parties, but like 
nobody necessarily wants to be like in this for their business. Mm -hmm. And that I think comes from that earlier age, right? Where we both were kind of the outliers yeah. is things that other people run away from. Yeah. That's my signal to run in. Yeah. You don't want to talk about this? Watch, I'm going to talk about this. Yeah. This is taboo. I'll take it on. Let's have that conversation. I mean, I think so much of what I do today is tackling taboos with women. I talk about sex. I talk about money. Like these are the things yeah. that we're told culturally. So, don't talk about this, topic, right? <laughs> That's right. Sex and money. Like let's address these things yeah. that are so much about how our, our life experience mm -hmm. here yeah. is, you know, both of those things are such important factors. So. And I love the pink, by the way. Yeah, thank it, you. It's like, it, it, it kind of energizes <laughs> there everything. There you go. Now, now, Slate. Yeah. A lot of people today, especially, everybody wants to be an entrepreneur. Yes. Everybody. Like, everybody is a CEO. Everybody has a business card. And, and it's... And, and, but I don't think... I, I don't think people understand what real entrepreneurship is. Like, like I, I am right now fascinated to be in front of you. And, and a lot of other, um, and not a lot, because there's not a lot of people that sold and got companies to a billion, but I want to learn, like, how do you get to a billion? Because now a billion is the next, it is a new million. Yeah, yeah. A million is no longer anything. Yeah. And, and, and so for you, yeah. when you started your company, Slate, and it took you, let's say, a few years. Yeah. Did you already have the whole executive team? Like I'm talking about like okay. president, CEO, CFO, all of that? No way. It was me. Like I told you, like, it's me. Like, hi, I'm the, I'm the chief counsel. Hi, I'm the head of sales. When you sold it. Oh, when I sold it, yeah. yes. Over time, I built my team. Yeah. And my, the most important people I started to add were salespeople, mm. right? I'm such a big uh, salesperson kind of, uh, kind of girl. And because um, and you've got to deliver those end results. But yeah, I slowly built out the team. And it, the most important thing I did was picking the right people. Okay. It's the single most important thing I did is finding those people who align. And here, here's what I did. I gave them skin in the game. Mm -hmm. If they were going to come, they were willing to bet on me, they were going to get a piece of the company. Not everybody does that, but you know what? It is my secret to success. Because if you give people skin in the game, they make decisions totally differently. How early they get up, how late they go to bed, how they spend the money of the company. Yeah. So everybody all of a sudden were owners. They owned this with me. And so they were holding each other accountable to what we were trying to accomplish. So you did this with the first company Both. and then you did it for the next company. I did. Even, I will tell you, um, I, don't, I haven't talked about this much. I gifted shares in my second company to all the people that worked with me in my first. Oh, wow. Wow. So even if they didn't work with me, I figured I was in that position because of their hard I feel like when you give and you're a good person, yeah. good things happen to you. Yeah, for sure. Like a funny story, I don't, I'll don't. i say it in a minute, but we ended up with a car rental. Yeah. And we, weren't, we didn't need a car rental. Like we were supposed to get picked up, dropped off, yeah. and then we're in the hotel right now. And we're trying to get here and the Uber is not working. Oh. There, nothing's working. And then we're like, we have a car right here. Yeah. And we weren't supposed to have a car rental, but... Everything just, I was telling my wife, everything happens for a reason yes. and it, it always works out. And I think good people, you're just ethical. You work hard. You have the right attitude. You have your loyalty and things always happen good to you. And then those people that try to take shortcuts or backstab you or things like that, bad things always come back to them. I look, I do believe you should always let your success be a collective success. Don't be edging people out so that you can keep it all let them in and watch how much they support you and they're going to make you achieve even more than you ever could have on your own so i i, I totally agree with yeah. that i hope you know of all the things all, all the things people should aspire to be sort of remembered for their generosity yeah. is what should top the list yeah, well, i could feel your energy like it's so it's so positive like every time every time i feel like every time somebody touches you they, they make millions. I hope everything I touch turns to pink. <laughs> I want it to be pink gold, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's, yeah. let's do it. And then now, Cindy, going back about the skin in the game. Yeah. Employees versus salespeople. Yeah. So I know you had a lot of salespeople. We were talking about that. Totally. But then you have a lot of employees yeah. who are crucial to yeah. your business. Yeah. How, how much equity to salespeople? How much equity to... Uh, Everyone got shares. Everyone got shares. And I think really the sort of rule of thumb is... Mm -hmm. 
what would be so meaningful to them? What if you 3X their salary, right, yeah. in an outcome? What if you 5X their salary? Mm -hmm. And really thinking about shares relative to that contribution that they are, but every single person, whether you pack the boxes or you lead the sales team, got skin in the game. How do you calculate if it's gonna be 3X, 5X, or 2X their salary? Do you, is that something where you just kind of go, go to bed and you're thinking, well, this person gave me this much, so they're gonna get 5X, this person, yeah. I mean, honestly, you it's, make that it's it, yeah, of course. And, I, and I'm thinking about constantly, so here's, let me say it a different way. As you build your company, you got a pie, right? What am I gonna, gonna give away as pieces of this pie? Give away 20% of it to people who work for you. Yeah. 20 to 30% of it, gone you're gonna give that away to people because they're gonna make the difference in how much you ultimately ultimately yeah. make at the end. So that's a bit of how I thought about it. And then, you know, among different roles or anything else, I think you can you can kind of calculate it mm -hmm. based on, you know, their how much they contribute to the company. Yeah. So in other words, people that are watching this, uh, let's let's say you have a business and you already allocate 70% to you. Yeah. And then you know, okay, 30%. I'm gonna give them 30%, whether it's a billion or two billion or five billion, and then everybody, you're saying everybody, including your receptionist, is every gonna get- Every single person, the company. every single person. It's what we talk about, it's how they show up, it absolutely is their value system. I mm -hmm. hire owners. That's who I hire, nice. owners. And ownership is quite literal, right? Because yeah. it's my commitment to you that I'm gonna give you a piece of this. Your commitment to me is that you're gonna show up with an ownership mindset. Yeah. So when you sell this company and you get that money yeah. and um, I don't know, you, you could you could talk about how much you got or, or, or give us a nice yeah. idea, yeah. but you get all that money. Yeah. So when you get all that money, yeah. what's next? Don't you feel like, let me go get some uh, nice cars. Let me go get some nice houses uh, and just fly around and visit the world and not work anymore. Like what, what do you feel in that moment when you sell your first company and you have all that money? I got to tell you what I did. So I, I sold the company, billion dollars up front. I woke up the next morning. The first one. The, the, the second, when yeah. I sold Sprout for a billion, billion in cash. Mm -hmm. And you know, I woke up the next morning, I'm still the same person. I have more zeros in my bank account, I'm still the same person. Yeah. You know what I did? I went to work because I like to go to work. Yeah. That's what I like to do. And I think it doesn't change you. I hope it doesn't change you. Can you have nice things? A hundred percent. But you know, for me, there's a shift, I think, in life in which you move from success being about what you can prove mm -hmm. to what you can give. And that is really the shift that happened in me is about how now do I pay it forward? How do I make other people who were just as overlooked as I was, who were the misfits, how do I get them to their dreams? And that's what I spend so much of my energy on today because that's my definition of success now. Yeah, and that's amazing. When, before that, the billion dollar yeah. exit, your first exit, yeah. um, and, and you don't have to answer it, but how, how, how much did you exit for? Yeah. And, and then how soon did you just jump into your yeah. next uh, <laughs> so literally, you know, my first company was called Slate yeah. and my second company was called Sprout. Mm -hmm. So I acquired this product for women while I was still in Slate. I knew I wanted to do it, but I needed to sell Slate in order to have enough money to buy it. Mm. So I knew I'd have to sell the first company and turn around to those investors and be like, okay, I just made you a 10 X. I'm going to need some more of your money. Let's go again. We're going to do this for women. Uh -huh. And so I literally got it sprouted out of the company. That's why I called it sprout and sold slate the next day. So I was busy. I had to go to work on my new job. I took no downtime um, in between those two. And it, that it's so funny. You know, I had that first exit. I can't tell how much, but, I bet you can guess, like hundreds of billions of dollars. Mm -hmm. And um, I never even processed it. Mm -hmm. I, I never even thought about it. Cause I like, I had a new task at hand. I had to get this done. There were 26 products for men, but not a single one for women. Yeah. I had no time to waste. Yeah. So I went to work on that. And then I think after I sold that company, that was a big news story. Yeah. And it was, a, you know, I got this product approved by the FDA. That was yeah. unreal. And then two days later, I announced I was selling it for a billion dollars. And so there was a lot of news and everything else. And I think that one I kind of sat with for a second and thought, okay, what's next? Like, what are you going to do? 
I know you were the person that had a kind of a fight with the FDA and you and you won, right? I did. You were, you did were. you see the pink boxing gloves sitting on my desk? I did not, but I heard about them. I, yeah, I, I'll, I'll see them after. Yeah. But but I, I know that you were going to have your biggest day or your biggest moment and something happens. Yeah. And, then, and then it do, and doesn't go quite well. Oh, no. That's Can right. Can you talk about that? So I sold the business, right? It's the, it was the entrepreneur's dream come true. Mm -hmm. I sold my company for a billion dollars to a huge company and they're going to take it across the world and everything else. And then guess what? They didn't launch it. They literally put it on the shelf. And here I am sitting on the sidelines. I've worked so damn hard. My team has worked so hard. And like, I was feeling sorry for myself. And then I thought, who is this, right? What are you doing? Like I'm sitting in the corner crying. Yeah. And I thought, not on my watch. So I went to that company and I said, give it back. And they said, <laughs> we just sold it to you for a billion dollars. And I said, yeah, but you owe me money for all the royalties that were part of the deal. So they weren't holding up their end of the bargain. And so ultimately I made them pay attention and in exchange for me quieting down, um, they gave me the company back for free and the shareholders kept the billion dollars. Crazy story, but proof that, you know I'm gonna use some sexual innuendo here. Yeah. The, ha the happy ending is up to you. Yeah. The happy ending is up to you in life, yeah. in life. So you can see this, I really had this unreal moment and then, ah, right, it goes back down to, to you know, disappointment. Mm -hmm. So what are you gonna do? It's about how many times you'll get back up. Yeah, you, you talk about uh, being bold yeah. and, and like screaming it to the world, right? Yeah, for sure. So like I do a lot of that. Yeah. And then, um, you know, sometimes my wife and, and other people, they're like, don't say that. Don't say that. What about what, what is everybody on Facebook and Instagram yeah. going to think? They're going to think you, you haven't done that. What, what if you don't do it? Yeah. But I like to put, you know, things uh, out there yeah. and then I make them happen. Yeah. But but is it important or were you like that? Did you ever have any haters? Or, or, oh, or are you kidding? OK, for sure. I mean, have I ever had? I still have. I mean, there's always going to be, I think, when you're disruptive, when you're challenging what is the norm, mm -hmm. you're going to have people who don't like it. Yeah. And that's just fine. They cannot like it. I'm not for everybody. Mm -hmm. And that is totally okay. And you've got to be comfortable in that, I think, to really um, disrupt. Yeah. So when your company, you get it back. Yep. What exactly happens when you get it back? Yeah. Do, do you kind of have different ideas or do you actually make, make it work? Yeah. Yes. It's available today. Women go on the product, um, you know, every single day. How does and this we product get, work? <laughs> it works. I want to get somebody, if you have some, <laughs> you have some, here. I know you're going to want me to bring samples I, to I the Driven some, event. I, I want to get, yeah, yeah, for free samples to all the yeah. ladies. And, and then um, I think that'll actually make it a bigger hit. It's amazing. Happy. But, so maybe some for sale here for our last night. Yeah. Um, That's great. I, I love it. I'm looking at I her face right I now. I the pills out. You no, know, are, it, are they pills? They are. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a daily pill you take. And for women, it's, uh, it's brain flow, not blood flow. Yeah. So we turn on in the brain. Uh, that's where mm. we unlock desire. And for really so many women, so many women, millions of women, um, something goes off at some point in their life. It might be after kids. It might be, you know, a variety of things. But they just don't have that level of desire they once had. And they want it back. Like, it bothers them. So it's really such an important it's such an important issue for so many women and yeah. for me it was so obvious and disappointing that we didn't talk about it and we weren't addressing it yeah but i gotta tell you when you get your company back it's not like oh great i got it back now let's do this like you get it back and it's they've done nothing yeah so now you're picking up the pieces you're probably trying to fix some things that you know were harmed from like people's perception because it never launched. Like, why didn't it ever launch? And, um, and then you're building a new team. And I think you're challenging yourself to say, okay, Smarty, like how would you do it differently this time? Yeah. What would you do different? And so that's been kind of the fun of this is yet again, like a new challenge. Yeah. How am I gonna do it this time? And, uh, and so far so good with an incredible team. So before we go a little bit more with, this, with the sexual stuff, yeah. um, just backtracking a little bit. Yeah. Uh, let's just say, and I'm making numbers up. Let's, let's just say you sell for a billion yeah. 
and 30% you gave it away in equity, yeah. and then there's like 70% left. And then uh, I don't know if I don't know if it's if it uh, it relates to this, yeah. but I I think I saw somewhere where you. Uh, got a hundred million or something like that, or are you f from investors or something? Like I that? did. I, I raised a hundred million dollars. Uh, yeah. so, so, was that for the for part of the exit for a billion? Um, it, so to build that company, it it required. To build it, yeah. Mm -hmm, it so, required. So I I I used fifty million of it, mm -hmm. and fifty million of it I got as a um, I'm gonna call it a bluff. Mm -hmm. So in the, when I thought I'm at the precipice of being able to sell this, I went and raised 50 million more dollars so mm -hmm. that people would know I'll do it myself. You want it? Yeah. You want to pay me for it? Or should I just go because I'll do it myself? Yeah. And I ended up giving that $50 million back. Got it. <laughs> so when you sell the company, obviously yeah. there's people that have to get paid and all sure. of that. I don't think anybody has heard this, but, but uh, like, like how, how much money goes to uh, Cindy? Oh, I can't tell, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I'll just say I'm the biggest shareholder. We'll say it that way. But yeah. I, don't, I didn't own 100% of the company. Yeah. No, I think really so few founders are ever able to hold on to 100% of it because of the capital that we need to scale. Yeah. But I will tell you from uh, like a kid who grew up in like the factory town in upstate New York, more zeros in my bank account than I ever imagined. <laughs> did, did you ever kind of play, play games in the mornings where you um, log into your online banking <laughs> and then you kind of see it and then you're like, man, and then you kind of like yeah. go, go to the restroom, come back and then you log back in and you kind of can't believe it because it happened to me when I when I had a million dollars cash the first time yeah, yeah, yeah. I was kind of like I can't believe this and, and I, I seriously logged in yeah. maybe like a, a thousand times that day oh, and, and then after that so cool. like it just it, it was just like okay yeah. but but uh, did you have that moment where you were kind of like wait is this is this real or not can I tell you a secret yeah, yeah. yeah. I still think I'll be poor yeah I, I think that's the truth. Like, I still think like you're capable, get up and make money. Mm -hmm. I don't really, it's a very interesting, I have a very interesting relationship with money. Actually, mm -hmm. um, I work with a guy who's wonderful in terms of managing money and he came literally was sitting in my office yeah. and he said, okay, um, you drive the same car, you live in the same house. And he looked at me for a second and he goes, and I'm pretty sure you were wearing that outfit the last time yeah, I yeah, saw yeah. you. He's like, we need to get have a real relationship. I say that sort of jokingly. I, I just don't, I don't focus a lot on it. But I do think there's a moment that's a bit surreal um, in, in kind of recognizing you have it. And look, money is a conduit. It can be for good or for bad. Mm -hmm. How are you going to use it? What are you going to make? So now I feel it is like this unbelievable opportunity and power, if you will, to make a difference. Yeah. When, when you sold the comp when you, when you build a company, yeah. a lot of people, um, leave the company because they want to start another company and be your competitor. So you said it earlier, yeah. you can build a billion dollar company yeah. by yourself, or yeah. at least there's yeah. not a lot of people. For sure. Uh, how, how important is it for entrepreneurs watching this yeah. to understand that, hey, you know what? Yeah, I want to be a billion, I want to have a billion dollar company, yeah. but I mean, I can't do it by myself. Yeah. How important but, is that? Like how, why, why do you think everybody wants to build something by themselves? Yeah, like, I, I, I don't know. I, I'm with you. Makes sense. No, it makes total sense. Because I think I talk to entrepreneurs all the time and like they'll have an idea and they're like, oh, I, I, I can't tell anybody my idea. I yeah. can't tell anybody. Yeah. They're going to steal it. And I'm like, oh, hell no. Go tell everybody your idea. Like mm -hmm. be in the elevator with people and be like, you can't believe what I'm about to do. That is, you put it out there in the world. I think even as you said, the boldness, yeah. you're putting it out there in the world and I think making it come to fruition. People, you gotta believe that nobody's gonna hustle harder than you are to mm -hmm. make that dream come true. And if you believe that, at your core, you'll tell everybody what you're trying to do. Because what you're doing is you're getting their support, and frankly, it's gonna be even bigger yeah. than you could ever do on your own if you let people in on the ride. Yeah, and your company, culture. How important was culture? Was your company like, because every company that I see that's worth a lot yeah. and that gets to yeah. a high level, I see that the culture is a little bit different than, it, than average. Oh, companies. yeah. 
Honestly, part of when I started Slate and Clean Slate, I'd been in environments, I'd been successful in these environments. Like I'd climbed the ranks and I'd done all the right things because I was driven and competitive, um, but I was totally uninspired. I didn't, I didn't like these cultures. They weren't rewarding people. And so culture is key. For me, you know, thinking about the choices people have to make to show up and work with me to be part of these businesses is something I want to talk to the whole driven crowd yeah, about yeah, yeah. because I think that made all the difference. I hire against it, I fire against it, I reward for it. And it's really culture is what's going to get you across the finish line. How you treat people, how you reward people is the most important thing. That so many companies are soulless. Like if you go in, they're so process oriented, they try to make everybody fit into a mold. And what they're doing is they're killing all of the creativity and really the superpower and strength, I think, of their individuals. Yeah. What, what is culture to you? Like, I know you talked a little bit about it right now, but is there like maybe two things or three that, that, that stick out from what you use, from what you do with yeah. all the people in, in, in your company? Because for example, for us, yeah. Like we have crazy parties, yeah. uh, we have like award ceremonies, uh, competition. Sure. But but like what what um what what did you do or what's culture to you? Okay, well first I'm so sad you just missed like all my salespeople because we were doing all of those things, yeah, having yeah. big parties and and um and and doing an award ceremony. Culture to me is literally writing down on a piece of paper who you are going to be in this world and never compromising it. Mm -hmm. And for me, I really wrote down six things, six things that were going to define us, who we were. And again, like when people come in to interview with me, they're totally, like their skills, they're qualified, right? Their skills are great. Yeah. I actually don't care. Like I don't care about the pedigree. What I care about is, is this a person who makes these choices? And I, that's how you get to culture. And we, the, the best part of, I think when you develop a culture like that, there's so much pressure when you think about it, the leader, yeah. right? We look to the leader of the organization to set the tone. They absolutely have to, right? They've got to live it, breathe it, everything. But when you establish a culture that really is very uh, definable, every single person in the company holds each other accountable. Yeah. Because you know what? Like we're gonna cross the finish line, we're gonna sell a billion dollar company. Mm -hmm. If you're not pulling your weight, you don't get to stay. And yeah. that's not me saying it, that's their coworkers saying it. Yeah, yeah. The six things, can you, can you mention a few of those or are yeah. those for driven? Oh, even? well, it depends. I, I, wanna, I wanna tell the driven crowd, but I'll, I'll tell you. Maybe one well, look, we'll, or two? we'll talk about, let's just leave it at this. Ownership is my first. Okay. We're gonna talk about what it means to be an owner, how you make that choice, and how ownership is not only literal, but really your mindset. How do you show up? Yeah, and, and then also, when you give ownership to uh, people in your company, yeah. there's like phantom stock and there's yeah. like shares. Is there? You can do it so many different ways. Yeah. Right. Did you do a lot of different ways? Um, I did toward the end. Nope, I did. So yeah. I, I thought about a, a variety of different, like classically, I did mostly stock options. Mm -hmm. But look, not everybody is going to have their company capitalized that way. Yeah. So how do you even just think about like if we hit this number, everybody gets this? Like just naming it. it yeah. It's really about like the goal on the wall. Everyone's very clear about what we're chasing and everybody gets a reward if we get there. When you say uh, the number to hit is this, yeah. let's just say the number to hit is 80 yeah. and they hit 78 or 79. Do, Too do, do bad. you sometimes feel bad and you're like, oh, you know what? You no. tried hard, but no. here it is. Uh -uh, so we you have to keep your word. Yeah, you got to keep your word. Like we said the number. That's part of the I, I got to tell you, this is so much fun. Yeah. So just cultural. Um, I love to give away cars. Mm -hmm. It's one of my favorite things. And, um, and so we are going to give away a car again next year. And, and the fun for me is we do it at a big meeting. I call it Hollapalooza. Yeah. So it's a, it's a company tradition. Um, you know, it, so many of my uh, folks on my team are salespeople. Mm -hmm. They're never in the office but why don't they get to go to a, like a holiday party, right? And bring their significant other. I yeah. want their significant other to understand why they, what our culture is, why they work so hard. So I was announcing this contest just at this meeting and there are six keys, but only one of them turns it on. Mm -hmm. And it's so funny because my, my, some of my team was like, but, but, wait, but wait a minute, 
what if I get one of the keys and it doesn't turn on? I'm like, but you got a key that could have turned it on, right? Yeah. So you got to stay true to some of those things. And uh, yeah, seven, 78 is an 80. Yeah, yeah that, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, you, you made me feel better. Yeah. Uh, I had a situation about that, you but did. but but um, you talked about hiring the right people. Absolutely. I'm sure your company has a lot of people, right? You hired a lot of people. Uh, I don't know yeah. if you could share how many yeah. how many employees or how many people are a part of your company, yeah. but how do you hire the right people? Because f like for me at least and my wife, we've dealt with a lot of people, yeah. and a lot of people don't work out. Yeah. And and we're getting a, we're getting much better in kind of identifying who could work. But how do you hire the right people? Listen, we all have that drawer. Yeah. Right? We all have that like file drawer where you open up and it's the people who didn't work. Yeah. So we all experience that, right? I think there are a couple things. Um, one is again, you're defining the characteristics you're looking for in them. Mm -hmm then you're asking them the questions that tease that out in the interview. Like, tell me this story. I'll yeah. tell you my number one interview question. It is, what is the first way you made money? Hmm. And what's interesting is people will answer that question almost on autopilot, right? Because even if we're at like a cocktail party, people say like, oh, you know, your job, whatever. So they'll often say their first job, their formal job. Like, oh, well, you know, I did blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay. I'm seeing if they're paying attention. And I have one woman who works for me today in, in Texas and she came in and, you know, I asked her the question and she was like, well, you know, I, um, I babysat and, and then she could tell my look was like, okay. And she said, but wait a minute, that's not the first way I made money. I said, okay, tell me. She said that her mom, like she had a beautiful garden yeah. in their backyard. And when she was a little girl, like six, her mom would say, hey, like she picked the tomatoes and say, go take them to the neighbors. But when she got to their doorstep, she'd sell it to them. <laughs> And I said, yeah. you're hired. Yeah. So there's a, something about that question, I think, in any entrepreneurial environment where you're seeing how early the motor turns on, mm -hmm. right? Like how early were they driven? I told you my first hustle was making my big brothers pay me money to bring them things yeah, yeah. to the fridge, yeah. uh, you know, from the fridge to the couch. But I think that's a really important question. Um, so I think that's a, a big piece of how I'm picking people is just getting them to talk around the values that I think will make the defining difference, um, you know, in our, in our company. Yeah. And then switching that when you hire the wrong person, uh, how soon do you get rid of them or, or, yeah, or 90 days, yeah. like you should always have in my mind, a 90 day period. And by the way, I missed a really important thing. Yeah. So beyond the fact that I'm looking for these characteristics, there's also something I need to do. I need to put all my cards on the table. This, this environment, this culture is not for everybody. No, it, it's not. Entrepreneurship is not for everybody, right? So you need to say, like I literally will say to them, all right, all my cards on the table. This is what we're like. Mm -hmm. You may love this. This may be the family you never <laughs> knew you wanted, or you may be like 30 days into this going, oh my God. Who are these people? What is this madness? What is this pace that I have to work at? Yeah. So I think many times over the years, I can't tell you I did that at the beginning, but over the years, I got much better at understanding that I also needed to set an expectation to see if they flinched because I don't want them to be unhappy yeah. and I don't want to be unhappy because I wasted time. Yeah. So, you know, we always, with everybody we hire, we do a 90 day, like a 90 day, 90 days, we're going to sit down and we're going to talk. Do you have a reviews? Like 30 days, 60 days? No, 90 days. 90 days. Yeah. I like, you got to give them a little bit of time to get, yeah. get up and going. But I think that 90 day mark within three months, you, you both know if it's a good fit. Yeah. Is it, is it still hard sometimes when it's 90 days, it doesn't work out? Yeah. Do you kind of feel bad or do they sometimes go, uh, crying to you oh no cindy please i like you you like me or, do, or are you not involved uh with the hiring and firing process i that's one other thing no matter how big you get always meet every single person you're going to put on your team that is a priority yeah that is such an important piece right of your yeah. your ultimate destination your ultimate success um so yeah of course here's my rule of thumb on that I will go to the ends of the earth for somebody who is making an effort, who is okay. genuinely trying so hard. They're learning, they care, they're showing up, they're putting it all in. It might be that, they, that we haven't helped them enough with training 
-hmm. or we haven't done that, then that's on us, yeah. right? But if they're phoning it in and they're not making an effort, bye. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. So is Cindy in the office? Yeah. Are, are you the Cindy that kind of talks to everybody? You're in the mud or are you Cindy that's in your office? Oh my God, no. Are you kidding? I can't stay, I can't stay in my office. Yeah. I have like too much, I, even sitting here in the chair, yeah, I'm like wanting to get, get up and move. Yeah. I have a lot of energy. So no, never sit in your office behind the closed door all day. I mean, I know you have to have some privacy on calls yeah. and everything else, but how can you be in touch with what's happening in your company if you're not in the thick of it? Yeah. Like I love to sit down and answer like our customer service calls. I mean, the woman, she's been with me now for 15 years uh, who runs that three companies later, she's still yeah. with me. And um, you know, she always laughs because she's like, you're not really that good at this. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. but I still want to hear yeah. what the customers are saying. Yeah. And here's um, one of the things that we do. So culture, I can't believe I didn't tell you this. We eat lunch together every day. Hmm. And that has been so important over the years. Like I always think, you know, how do you, how do you build a culture? Order pizza, get everybody around the table, whatever you want, pick the food, but sit together every day. And I did that early because I thought, oh, I came out of these environments where it's like death by meeting. Mm -hmm. So many meetings, right? We meet just to have a meeting, just to feel like we're all productive. So how do you kill that? Okay, every day we're gonna sit together for lunch and we're gonna talk about everything that's going on. Now here's what's really happened. It not only bonds us together as a family, but we do actually know everyone in the company is on the same page. Yeah. We know everything that people are working on, what they're struggling with. It is the absolute opportunity, right? You, you can never say, I didn't know that was going on. Yeah. It's been my, it's, that's another secret weapon. Yeah. Order pizza. You, you gave a lot of value right now so far <laughs> already. I, I know a lot of people are going to use all these things that they, that they heard. But a couple more things uh, before we end. Uh, so just to, to end this, this part, are you a workaholic, which I, I, know, I, I know you are, but how does Cindy's day look? Or do you work like 16-hour work days, 14-hour work days? Yeah eight hour work days and Saturdays and Sundays, do you have time for, that you spend for you, your family, or, or how does your week look? I'm looking at my fiance right now. <laughs> so I'll, I'll, I think I can answer this he, question. He, I was talking, I was talking <laughs> to him and, and he said, she said, she's such a workaholic, but, but at dinner work, cause I asked him, do you, do you drink? Cause I'm, I'm like trying to like get in, like shred a yeah, little bit. Yeah. And, and I asked him, do you drink? And he's like, alcohol or, or, or other things and I'm like, yeah, alcohol. And so he says, Oh yeah. And, 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 yeah. and he said that you really didn't drink. No, um, and, and, and yeah. now I, I, I bet it, I bet now you, maybe you do a little bit, a little but, bit. but, um, he was saying that, that he kind of brought that part where, where he you did. got away from work a little yeah, bit and had a little sure. bit of time for yourself on, I don't know, but I, I, I don't know if I'm making no, shit up. I, that's totally true. Yeah. I mean, he's such a good balance for me, but the truth is we also work together. So yeah. I think to love me is to work with me yeah. <laughs> because I'm probably going to be working most of the hours. You guys know exactly what that's yeah, like. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, I, even our pillow talk might be about business, but, but same, a same. long time ago, I think, you know, a lot of people think about all the headlines. So we talk about balance and, you know, self care and all of that. I don't know. I decided a long time ago, my work is my hobby. My hobby is my work. I love yeah. what I do. Yeah. Like it energizes me. Yeah. So I never feel cheated if I'm working. Like, do I have downtime where we have to watch like stupid reality shows? Of course, yeah. of course. Like all of us have a day where you got to end um, that way on the couch and watch that. But, uh, but I really do love what I do. Yeah. And weekends too? Weekends you like to work? Or? Uh, yeah, I'm pretty much, I'm always, let's just say it this way. I'm always on call. Yeah. And I think if you've built something right. from scratch, you realize like, hey, you know, if somebody else doesn't show up, I got to. Yeah. I'm showing up. So, so Cindy, now that you have a lot of money, I'm just going to say that. Yeah. And, and I'm sure you have other, uh, other companies or maybe yes. you, you're investing in other, yeah. other businesses. Yeah. Um, so talk about that. And, and also, do you believe in building a company always with the idea that you're going to sell it? Or, or building companies to keep them? Um, I will tell you, I'll never have a company that um, my team's kids will work at. <laughs> I think I, 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 think I, I like, the, so I think there are CEOs that are builders and mm. there are CEOs that are the longer term. I'm a builder. Mm. I love the build. Yeah. That's what I like. 
So at some point I'm going to want to build the next thing. Um, but I don't think that I obsess over, I've got to sell it. Yeah. You, you will have um, made a huge mistake. I think if you're, all you're thinking about is build a sell, build a sell. You're building to create unbelievable value. And I promise you when you create that value, they're going to be knocking because they're going to want it from you. So you just got to keep your eye on the ball um, for that. But um, today we, we do have through the incubator. So, you know, I invest the proceeds uh, just of selling these businesses and other disruptors mm -hmm. and people taking big swings at crazy firsts. Yeah. Um, those are my kind of people, the underdogs. And so we have 13 different companies now wow. um, under the incubator that we're a part of. Well, one um, man that I know, he sold his company and he told me that that was his biggest mistake. Uh, he, and, and he told me sometimes it's better to keep it because yeah. you're making that, that flow, that flow every month. Yeah, yeah. But when you sell it, you get a, like a one nice thing. check, yeah, but then it's sure. like, what do I do now? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you agree with that or? or? Uh, I, I, I don't, um, but it's just, it's just a different probably philosophy yeah, in yeah. that like I'll go build it to a place and then take the big check and say, you, you go and take it to the next place. I'm yeah. starting over. I'm going to build this one. To I think your personality is just like you, you, you don't stop and you yeah. just keep moving. Yeah. I, I heard you say also about being curious. For sure. That, that it's very important. That that's a good quality. Think in. about it. Like all of the folks were on stage together, right? Mm -hmm. At Driven. Mm -hmm. What would be a common characteristic? They're all like wildly curious. Yeah. Like these are people who never stop learning. Yeah. And that's why I love being around them. Yeah. No, that's awesome. And then also one, la one last thing, um, Cindy, that you said, uh, always appreciate yeah. your people. That appreciation is really good for your people yeah. and your customers. Yeah. Sure. Um, how, how important was that in every venture that you've done? Huge. So look, I, I think that's a bit of a life philosophy. Like, mm -hmm. do you show up with an attitude of gratitude? I mean, honestly, on my darkest days, the, and there are dark days mm -hmm. when you build these things, I still was able to kind of pick myself up and marvel at like, how cool is it that I'm, that I'm getting to do this? How cool yeah. is it that these people have bet on me. How cool is it that people gave me money to be able to realize the stream? Like I need to show up for them. And I think that appreciation, that appreciation for every single person who bet on me made me committed every day to pay them back and then some. Appreciation even for your customers is imperative, right? That's who you are at the service of. And it's so fun. What I would say to everybody is, don't do it unless you're gonna love the ride and it's gonna be up and it's gonna be down. But when you love the ride and you let other people in on it with you, watch out. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Cindy, I'm, I'm really uh, happy that we did this. I yes, think a lot of people you. got a, a lot of value. I have like a ton of more things that I wanted to go over, but I want to save them for Driven. Perfect. Um, and uh, Cindy, where can people follow you and what's your favorite um, platform. I love it. If you follow me at Cindy Pink CEO, of course, um, Instagram, but DM me. I'm happy to write you back there, but all the, all the platforms I'm at Cindy Pink CEO. And you do write back. I do. Yeah. I do. I'm not always as quick as I'd like to be, but I do write back. Awesome. Well, Cindy, thank you so much. And I'm um, really thank thankful. You. Thank you. Thank so you. Much. Thank you.